Hello, this is Christian Idealism, and today we are going to be looking into the neuroscience and free will and its relation to free will. This is, of course, brought to you by Cal Allender. So first, we need to understand the importance of neuroscience. Neuroscience is a study of the brain, and it gives us insight into the processes that help to govern the rest of the body. This is to say that without the brain, we couldn't even make choices in the first place, and regardless of one's view on the nature of choices, whether that's determinism, compatibilism, or libertarian free will. And the brain, the brain is the most complex organ in the body, and it's what gives us the ability to have experiences in the physical world. Whether one believes in the soul or not, there is no denying the fact that regardless of one's metaphysical beliefs that we experience on a daily basis what it is like to be our brain. In other words, the brain is at least correlated with our mind and our free will, if we do in fact possess free will. So first, we're going to be looking to the Leibniz experiments. Neuroscience has given us a lot of clues about the nature of choices. One such clue is the Leibniz experiments. These experiments by many determinists are considered to be the best evidence against free will. The arguments for this has, has gained a lot of attention in both the philosophical and scientific realms. The reason this is the case is due to the fact that there was brain activity many seconds before someone's conscious choice to make a choice since the scientist was able to actually predict what a person would do before they actually do it. And so this is considered evidence against free will. And this is evidence that free will may in fact be an illusion. So it's again, it counts as evidence against free will. So the reason this is the case is due to the fact that in the experiment, the scientists would put subjects on an EEG machine, which records brain patterns and ask the subjects to conscious consciously make hand movements and press buttons and then they would ask them to record the exact moment that they made that conscious decision. Leibniz found that the on the onset of brain activity clearly presented by at least several hundred milliseconds the reported time of conscious act. This is of course called the brain's readiness potential. Now at the time libertarians did object in that they said that this experiment doesn't refute free will due to the fact that it is only by a few milliseconds factor which is of course not enough time for there to be conscious choices and so and plus it didn't predict a specific outcome of a choice however these criticisms are addressed we we actually consider i think is the strongest evidence against free will which was discovered in 2008 by soon Soon, his, soon and his colleagues found that the readiness potential determines someone's specific choice. They found how the outcome of a decision can be encoded in brain activity up to 10 seconds before it actually enters awareness. This delay presumably reflects the operation of a network of high-level control areas that begin to prepare an upcoming decision long before it enters awareness. And so thus the argument is, is that since someone's conscious choice can be predicted a full 10 seconds before they actually made that conscious choice, then it seems that neuroscience has overturned the intuition of free will, and thus we are not in control of our choices, but rather we are just, of course, part of the deterministic universe. However, there are many problems with this. First, later researchers demonstrated that the readiness potential was present even when subjects did not make any conscious decisions, which indicates that it cannot be the sole driving force in decision making. There are a lot of studies confirming this, and so I would advise my viewers, if interested, to check them out in the description as all my sources are cited there. With these studies in mind, this actually leaves room for many different interpretations of the Leibniz experiments, and which some of them are actually open to free will. So first, these are the different interpretations. First, we're going to go over what's called, I call it the determinist interpretation. The readiness, in this interpretation, the readiness potential is always present and will cause the subject to make a decision 10 seconds before they are aware of that decision, and therefore free will is an illusion due to the subject lacking control over all their choices. In this interpretation, a person's consciousness would be entirely controlled by external factors. And of course, this interpretation would obviously be incompatible with free will. However, there are two other interpretations, which I'm gonna go over that are, that do in fact work with free will. So first is the veto interpretation. Leibniz himself actually proposes few. And in this interpretation, you have the readiness potential would act on its own, and then the person's intentional mind could veto the readiness potential from carrying out decision. In this interpretation, the brain will run on autopilot and carry out tasks. 
but the intentional mind has the ability to interfere and prevent actions from being carried out. This is compatible with free will. Then we have the most recent interpretation, which I call the deliberate versus arbitrary choice interpretation. The brain will run on two different processes of decision making. The first process is of course the arbitrary process, aka the readiness potential, in which someone makes choices that are determined, but these are arbitrary in which they are not important. For example, if you choose to press a button as they did in Soon's experiment or the Leibniz experiment, that would be the arbitrary. But then the second process is deliberate in which readiness potential is not present and someone can make an important choice, like for example, choosing to donate $1,000 to charity. In this interpretation, the arbitrary choices would be controlled by the readiness potential, but the deliberate choices are controlled by the intentional mind. This, of course, is compatible with free will. So now we're going to look more deeply into the veto interpretation. So recent evidence in neuroscience has, in fact, supported this interpretation over deterministic interpretations. In 2015, neuroscientists did find evidence for veto activity. It says, quote, in humans, spontaneous movements are often preceded by early brain signals. What such signal is the readiness potential that gradually arises within the last few precede that precedes a moment? An important question as to whether as to whether people are able to cancel movements after the initiation of such readiness potentials. Here, subjects played a game where they tried to press a button and earn points in a challenge with a brain-computer interference CBS, that had been trained to detect the readiness potential in real time and to emit stop signals. Our data suggests that subjects can still veto a movement even after the onset of the readiness potential. And so, of course, the significance of this is there has been a debate as to whether subjects can still cancel a movement after onset of these early signals. We test can win a duel against a brain-computer interference designed to predict their movement in real time from, ob from observations of their EG activity. Our findings suggest that subjects can exert a veto even after onset of this process. However, the veto has to occur before a point of no return is reached after which participants cannot avoid moving. So that would actually be evidence for the veto interpretation. Now we have the deliberate versus arbitrary choice interpretation. Recent evidence in neuroscience has also supported this interpretation. In early 2018, researcher Miles discovered that there are different neural mechanisms in the brain's decision making. So it says, quote, the onset of the readiness potential was repeatedly found to precede subjects' reports of having made an internal, an internal decision. This has been taken by some as evidence against a casual role for consciousness in human decision making and thus a denial of free will. Yet those studies focus on purposeless, unreasoned, arbitrary decisions. It remains unknown to, as to what degree these specific neural predicates of action generalize. We therefore directly compare the, the neural correlates of deliberate and arbitrary decision making during a thousand dollar donation task to nonprofit organizations. While we found that the expected readiness potential for arbitrary choices, they were strikingly absent for deliberate ones. The absence of readiness potential in deliberate decisions further points to different neural mechanisms underlying the deliberate and arbitrary decisions, and thus challenges the view that there is no casual rule for consciousness in decision making from arbitrary to deliberate real life decisions. And so what are the implications of this? So the implication of the veto interpretation is that the readiness, the readiness potential could be stopped by the intentional mind, thus allowing one to make a free decision in that time. The brain would run on autopilot until the mind is able to stop it before the point of no return. The implication for deliberate versus arbitrary choice interpretation is that the, the readiness potential would be present whenever a subject is making purposeless choices that have no effect on life or morality. But then free will is actually more involved when a subject makes more important choices and therefore there would be an absence of readiness potential. Of course, given the evidence I just went over, both of these interpretations have more support in recent neuroscience and are superior in explaining the full scope of readiness potential than the deterministic interpretations. And so these, I'm gonna kind of outline the, the main arguments for why I think these type of arguments don't work. So to summarize, we took into account that the, the evidence against free will from the Leibniz experiments and that decisions can be predicted 10 seconds before a subject made a choice. 
However, there are three major reasons why I think any argument against against free will based on these experiments fail. So the first reason why is that the readiness potential is present even when subjects are not making any conscious choices, and therefore the readiness potential cannot be the cause of conscious decisions. The second reason why? Researchers have identified a point of no return in self-initiation movement, which supports the interpretation that the mind has the ability to veto the readiness potential so that free will may take place in decision making. And finally, probably the most, probably my biggest objection would be this. Miles has discovered that the readiness potential is absent when a subject makes a deliberate choice rather than an arbitrary choice. Thus, the experiment in 2018 by Sume, therefore, cannot be counted as evidence against free will due to the fact that the subjects were making arbitrary rather than deliberate choices, and therefore any previous studies that involved arbitrary choices cannot be counted as evidence against free will. And so, now we're going to get into further discussion on why this is the case. So... The free will interpretations are, of the library experience are not, are not incompatible with each other. And I think once we look more into readiness potential, there is a very high possibility that we may get a correct model of readiness potential that is actually can help explain its relation to free will. And so given that the main arguments against free will have been addressed, in the next video, we will be looking into certain models of decision making that explain free will given our understanding of neuroscience and, of course, readiness potential. And finally, I want to make this final important point. The study of free will is still in the early stages, but given the evidence so far, the arguments against free will from neuroscience all depend on an incomplete understanding of neuroscience, and therefore such arguments should be dismissed. So again, the fact that these arguments rely on data that does not take into account deliberate versus arbitrary choices, I think is a strong reason why we, should, we shouldn't really take these arguments as strong arguments against free will. So that'll be the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Again, all sources are in the description. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.